Good morning. Today is Palm Sunday. Even though my message topic is not on Palm Sunday, I think we need to recognize it. When Jesus rode to Jerusalem, he said, they don't understand who I am. That I would like to gather you like a hen gathers chicks, but they don't understand. And he also says, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. Those were the Jews. And so I hope we're not of the same people today that, don't have, that haven't received him and haven't acknowledged him. And so I hope all of you have the joy and the peace of God in your heart this morning, which you can all have as a result of what Jesus did for us. They shouted Hosanna, which means, oh, save us, save us. And he has done that. So my topic this morning is one that I'm quite excited about. I told you about it two weeks ago. I feel God has given me a bit of a revelation that I value a lot, and I've used it a number of times already. And my topic is uh, unpaid debt. Unpaid debt. Jesus died. He paid for all sin, but not all sin is forgiven. He gave salvation to all, but not all will be saved. So my topic will be unpaid debt, and I'd like to start reading a number of verses this morning to give us a little bit of background what I'm talking about, and then I'll demonstrate to you what I I have in mind. Matthew 5, 23 says, so if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar, go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. We have the idea that if I've offended someone, then I go and repent. That's also true. But here it says, if you remember that someone else has something against you, stop praying, stop sacrificing, and go make it right. Verse 25, when you're on the way, so in other words, if this person is going to hold it against you or punish you for it, or take you to court, it says, and we're, when you're on your way to court with your adversary, settle your differences quickly. Otherwise, your accuser may hand you over to the judge who will hand you over to the of, an officer and you will be thrown into prison. And if that happens, you surely won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. So that's just a piece of what, what Jesus was saying. And I'm going to skip to another part of the Old Testament, Leviticus 2, verse 1. Leviticus 22, verse 1, it says, If someone steals an ox or a sheep and then kills or sells it, the thief must pay back five oxen for each ox stolen and four sheep for each sheep stolen. So what's he talking about? Later, if you read Leviticus, I just went through that book, and uh, several times God says, if you've taken anything from anyone, you always get back 20% more. So never once do you read of giving back what you stole, and then it's okay. You always get back more. Matthew 18, 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts... One was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Some versions say 10 million, uh, millions of dollars. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold with his wife and children and, that, and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant therefore fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. And we won't read the whole story, but we know that that same servant went and, and put his hands on the neck of, of another person who owed him a little bit of money, and he demanded that everything would be paid, and the master heard that and was very mad at him. And in verse 33 it says, Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers, until he should pay all that was due to him. So my heavenly Father, 
also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother. Now jump to Old Testament again. Exodus 34 verse 7. This is the Lord speaking. The God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and unfaithfulness. And then verse 7 says, I lavish unfailing love to thousands, to thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin. But, that's the last part of that verse. But I do not excuse the guilty. This is what I'm talking about. The guilty. The unpaid debt. He has just finished saying that I, 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 I forgive rebellion, I forgive iniquity and sin. I mean, what else, what else is there? But I do not forgive the guilty. I don't let the guilty go free. Another, another translation says I do not let them go unpunished. So I want to dis- explain to you this morning what my revelation has been. And I'm going to use this table. So I'm going to use these cups as my prop. So if I steal $400 from you, and I pay back $300, and I say, I'm sorry, I stole money from you, I I can't really pay the rest of it back, can you forgive me? Now what happens? Now we say, if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you either. Now I put my debt on him. This is still one debt of the $400, this is still one that I haven't paid, right? So I'm asking, I'm asking him to forgive this debt. This is the debt. This is the unpaid debt. That's this. I gave him everything that I, I thought I wanted to, but it's not paid in full. It's not paid in full. I still have this in, in my hand. So when I say, can you, I'm sorry, can you forgive me? I can't afford to pay it back. Is this person obligated to say yes? Some of you are, are saying yes, some of you are saying no. I'm going to get into that a little bit deeper. So this is your unpaid debt. This debt has to be paid for somehow. Someone will pay for this debt. Whether you do or if the person that I wronged pays for it. Someone has to pay for that debt. So Jesus died for all sin, right? But not all sin is forgiven. Only what is repented is forgiven. If it's not repented of, it's not forgiven. Do you forgive sin? Can you forgive sin? Or does only God forgive sin? According to the New Testament, we can forgive others' faults as well. And so Jesus saved. He died to be saved. Save everyone, but not everyone is saved. Only those that ask for it. So does grace apply to unpaid sin? Does grace make it okay for me to sin? Does grace cover willful sin? No, it doesn't. If it did, then we wouldn't have needed the Savior. It doesn't cover willful sin. So in the Old Testament, we just read that God said, children of Israel, if you steal an ox, you have five oxen back. A sheep, four sheep. Does that concept still hold today? And why, why did you give back more than you took? For one reason. It built relationships. It always builds relationships if you give back more than you took. When you ask to be forgiven, and I'm going to explain this in a little more detail, I don't think you're asking for this to be forgiven, you're asking for this to be forgiven. When you ask for forgiveness, you ask for things that you have not paid. You ask for forgiveness. Is that right? Is it right for us to ask for forgiveness when we have not paid our debt? So let me put up a Jewish law. I think you can put it up on the screen. They had a thing called teshuva. The definition is, you may, you may not ask for forgiveness unless, you have under, unless he undergoes sincere effort to perform teshuva. 
meaning repentance or turn around. That means you do a rigorous self-examination. Perpetrator engages with the victim, expressing regret, and make an effort to make things right, restitution. So they had a rule. You could not ask for forgiveness until you had paid it all back. Because if you don't pay it all back, then you're asking them to pay for your debt. And that wasn't fair. They had another rule. They had a rule that you could ask for forgiveness, and he said, no, you took it back. You went again. You get back $400, and he said, still said no. You took it back one more time. You add another $100. You brought it back again. If he said no the third time, then all the debt was his. That's, that was the Jewish law. Then that, that person received all the debt. You didn't need to pay anything. Assuming that you had done self-examination and you had done everything that you understood that you owed. So let's say you stole $400 and you give $300 back and you still owe $100 and somehow you managed to give another $100. Have you paid him in full? What if he had to pay interest on that money and he was late on payment and so I, I, that was another $100? So I owe that as well. Now we're just even. I have still inconvenienced this person. I have not made any restitution. Now we're still even. But when I do this, relationships are rebuilt. Now, now he, I really try to make him whole. Even paid for all the rest that he, that the interest and all the bother that he had because of it. In life, we try not to give more than we need to. Therefore, relationships are often never restored. They're never restored. So we have that missing link there. I give as little as I need to and expect you to pay the rest. That is not fair. It is not right. And we often, even, even when we say, well, I heard I offended you, so if I did, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. What have I said? I have not owned anything. I have not owned anything. I said, if you think I did, well, and it's your problem, you forgive me, I put it back on him. That's really no confession. But that's what we often do. So sometimes in life, we cannot make someone whole. When it comes to money, well, that's dollars and cents. We can figure that out. But sometimes in life, we cannot make something whole. We can try... Everything that's within us to make it whole, but we can't. I heard this man who was fishing, and as he pulled out his rod, the hook hit someone else's eye, and he lost his eyesight. He can't bring, bring back that eye. It, it, it's gone. He will miss it every day of his life. So let me give you an example of, of that. There was this man who had, is this woman who had one son. She loved this son. It's the only, only child he, she had. Someone kills that son. This person that killed the son goes to prison. Once he's done his term in prison, he gets out and he says, I want to meet that mother and say I'm sorry. And she says, I'm not having it. He's not, I'm not talking to this guy. I will never forgive him. And he pleads and pleads, can I please come and say I'm sorry? She says, no, no, I'm not, not, not having it. I will never talk to you. But he keeps asking, can I please, please come and talk to you? Finally, she says, under one condition. That I'm going to get a chair, and I'm going to put it by the grave of my son. I'm going to sit by, that, by my son's grave. If you want to meet me there at that grave, then you can come. So he drives up to the graveyard, crawls out on all four, Crawls to the grave side of the sun. Never looks up, never says a word. When he gets to the graveyard, he falls on face, face down in the grass and weeps and weeps and weeps for two hours. Then the mom says, get up. You've paid your debt. What happened? He wasn't bringing the boy back to life. He couldn't. There was no bringing back the boy. But somehow, somehow, this mom felt that he paid his debt. Prison wasn't enough. 
But there, the two hours in the ground, what happened there? The mother felt that he gave everything. He gave everything. There was nothing left to give. And when he got up, he says, I'll do whatever I can for you for the rest of my life. He gave everything. But he didn't bring back the son. So that's an example of where we, where we cannot ever pay the debt. But within your heart, you know if a debt is paid or not. You know. You feel it. Now, you can be inconsiderate. That happens as well. Romans 12, 18 says, If, if, it, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. As much as depends on you. There are times when you cannot make peace. They won't have it. They don't want to. They're not a forgiving person. They don't even want to consider what you have to offer, so you can't. As within you, live peaceably with all men. Now, let me ask you a question. Who? Well, let's do one other thing first. Let's say I've, I've spread a lie about you. And I say, I'm sorry, I, I spread some lies about you. Yeah, lots of people heard about it, but I can't do anything about that. It's, it's, so I still hold half the debt, right? I'm asking you to forgive me for spreading the lie. You say you'll forgive, but it doesn't feel good. The church still all knows that someone lied about me and, and I, there's nothing I can do about it. So who decides if you paid enough? Me or this person? Who do you think decides that? This person decides that. If this person doesn't feel good about what I did or what I paid back, he's the one that, that has a right to say the debt was not paid. We have this idea that I have to forgive whatever people ask me to forgive. We put an emphasis on that. How about we put an emphasis on making things right? Don't bother even asking for forgiveness. Just make it right. If I then go to the church and say to the whole church, I, I gossip about this person. It's not true. It was my fault. That's another payment, right? And I go to all the people outside the church, the 20 other families, I go in and say, say that I gossip. Now we're, now we're getting, getting there, right? And I go to this person and say, this is what I've done. I've repented to the church. I've repented to the people outside the church. What else can I do? When that person says, there's nothing else you can do, it's, it's paid for. In the Old Testament, they always give more. Always give more than you, than you took. That sounds not, not, not very, very easy, easy in, in, in between people. And so we, we tend to put the emphasis on you have to forgive. And we totally remove what we have to right. And that is where we go wrong. In the Old Testament, if you stole an ox and you gave back five more oxen, do you think you ever had to say, I'm sorry? There was no need. He said, ho, 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 I, I, I. You don't even need to give back five. If you could give me one, that's already double what I had. But if you give back five, now I feel bad for this person. Right? I feel really bad for that person. You don't need to even ask for forgiveness because this spoke louder than any word of forgiveness will. I think, I'm sorry, can you forgive me? is very cheap. Very often we use it as a cop-out and we never pay the price. Because paying the price hurts. Paying the price of what really happens always hurts. Or what did Paul mean when he said, I die daily? What did he die to? He didn't physically die, or 
Jesus says, if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. But what does take up the cross mean? This is part of it. Paying for your debt is part of it. Now, I know some people are difficult to deal with. I know that. I have a bit of a with the word forgiveness because we've made the word forgiveness into this word that erases us. And, and so that is not what we're talking about here. I would like to use another word instead of forgiveness. Let's say I've, I've sold $400 and I give $300 back and there's still $100 missing. That person can't forgive me. Release me of my debt. He can release me of my debt and say, you don't owe me. I'm, I'm not ever going to charge you for it. I'm going to forget about it. But someone will pay for this debt. Forgiveness implies that there is nothing ever owing. It may not be owing to him, but I can give this over to God and you say, God, you deal with this. You know exactly what happened here? I'm releasing the person, but you go ahead and deal with this person about this. I think that's scriptural. That is scriptural. Romans 12, 19 says, Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave, leave that Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will not, I will take revenge. I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. He will pay them back. And he says he's coming back and he will have the rewards with him to give according to our deeds. These are deeds. There will be payment. There will be subtraction. So we can give this to God and say, you're totally released. The word for So the word forgiveness has the meaning that everything is wiped out. But I believe in God's eyes it may not be wiped out. If I, if I do wrong and I don't want to admit it, but you still forgive me, am I guilty? I think I'm still guilty. Whether you forgive me or not, I'm still guilty. So if I steal $400 and I never give anything back, and I say, well, if I ever took something from you, uh, I'm sorry, can you forgive me? Am I now free? Because in my heart, I know I took this money. And we, we so often use it, well, if, if you say I'm sorry, I have to forgive, now it's on me. Now, if I don't forgive, I'm the bad person. I think we have it backwards. The definition for forgive has many meanings in the Greek. It says to cry, forsake. Lay aside, leave, let alone, let it be, uh, put away, suffer, and yield. There's many different meanings. And we put too much pressure on you have to forgive because if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. What if the person has never truly repented and you have said, no, it's not, it's not enough? We have been taught that you, you always say yes no matter what happened. But relationships are never rebuilt. In the whole Old Testament, the emphasis was always rebuilding relationships. Always. Always, always, always. So we, we don't ask for forgiveness for doing wrong. When I ask for forgiveness, I ask you for forgiving what I have not paid, the unpaid debt. And that is wrong. 1 Corinthians 4, 5 says, So don't make judgment about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. For he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our, our uh, private motives. Then God will give to each whatever praise is due. And other translation says, the reward that is due, good or bad. So all these things will be brought to light. If I stole money from you and you never noticed it and I got away with it, am I free? Am I free even though you never held it against me? You didn't even know I took it? No, there's still debt to be paid. It, it's not dependent on, on, on what you say. It's dependent on what I know in my heart. I still have debt to pay. Matthew 6, 14. If you forgive those who sin against you, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, 
This, you, for you to forgive others is not, well, I'm not quite ready yet. This is deciding I will never forgive you. It's a making, making a, a statement. What if we, what if we emphasize the restitution, the rebuilding of relationships, rather than see if you're going to forgive me and let me go? If grace covers willful sin, that's like saying, I can sin, it doesn't matter. If I give you back 200 and I say, oh, keep 200, that doesn't matter because grace covers it. It doesn't work that way. Grace doesn't cover willful sin. Forgiveness is not automatic. However, if you do this and this and this, forgiveness is automatic. There will be no issue. If I give what I, what I took plus more, it's not going to be hard to forgive. And I see it a lot of times in marriage where in relationships it's much more difficult than money. Money you can figure it out, but in, in marriage or in any relationship you say, well, well, he's hurt me for five years and now he says, I'm sorry and I'm supposed to forget it all. It doesn't work that way. There's no trust. There's no love. It doesn't work that way. And the husband says, well, I said I'm sorry. She doesn't forgive. She, she needs to read the Bible. She has to forgive. But he doesn't realize he never, he never did this. He never paid back his debt, what he really took. He took, he ruined the family. He ruined the relationship. Friends don't want to be with him anymore. Like, a lot of damage has been done. And if he wants to, he wants to pay a five-gallon debt with a one-gallon, I'm sorry, it doesn't work. The relationship will never be rebuilt. And the husbands will often come to me and say, well, well, what should I do? I've said I'm sorry. Ask her. She will tell you. Ask her. Well, she says, I, it'll take me six months to, okay, six months. Some say it's a year. Because she feels that you don't own it. You don't own what you did. And because you don't own it, there's no trust. So we can generally feel if someone owns their sin, their, their, whatever they took or did. We, we, we can feel it. Love covers a multitude of sin, right? So if, if we love one another very fervently, then a lot of it gets covered by, uh, by love, right? We love that person. But often when this happens, love is, is a bit missing. Whether it's my wife, my neighbor, my kids, my friends, doesn't matter who it is. But we tend to put guilt on the other person for not forgiving, but I've never paid, paid it back. Forgiving implies that it is costly. It's a costly thing. And sometimes we can, I've even seen where this person requires something of the, this person that has done wrong, that's not true. She thinks he did this. Or he thinks she did this. What, what in that case? In that case, the person still has to move towards her or him and explain it. Because you have to come to a unity in, in, in that case. We only forgive what has not been paid. And when I feel that you don't own it, what's wrong with saying, I think we need to talk some more. I don't think it's that simple. And we immediately say, well, you should forgive. God doesn't forgive you. How, was the Jews, did the Jewish law of Teshua, did, did, it have, did it have a value? But you didn't have a right to ask for forgiveness until you have paid your full debt. Because is it right for me, if, if you go to the bank and you borrow $5,000 to, to, to buy a car, and you've paid them back $4,800, only $200 is left. And you go to the bank and say, this car isn't really worth it, you can pay the rest. What, what happens? They take your car. If they said they would forgive, do you think you go back the next week and get another loan? Not a chance, because there was debt left. They paid for your debt. Someone pays for the debt. So there's not a chance you will get another loan because you didn't make them whole. 
and yet we try to get away without making things whole. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace, therefore, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So who decides if you've paid your debt? If you're at odds with someone, and it might even be someone that you don't like, who decides if you've paid back enough? If he thinks or she thinks that you've not paid back enough, then your relationship is broken. It's broken. So if you read through the New Testament, you will again and again and again and again read, live peacefully with all people, love one another, forgive one another, pray one for another, bear one another's burdens. It's, New Testament is full of how we're supposed to live with one another in peace. The same thing was true in the Old Testament. That's why God gave these laws. They were all designed to live in peace with each other. All of them. We need to own it. Dying daily or taking up our cross daily is costly. Part of that cost is doing this. That's part of the cost. This is a heavy cost. You have to deny yourself. You have to be quiet when you wouldn't like to speak. You have to give more than you think you should. But when you've done that, you don't need to ask for forgiveness. They can see that we are serious about it. When, ask the team to come up. When the team, as the team comes up, I'll ask you one more question. When, when Jesus said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Who are those people? He says, they will say, we, did we not cast the demons in your name? They knew Jesus. They knew him. So could it be that those people who said, they raised their hands and said, I, I want to accept the Lord, but never gave their life to him. It was only doing what he needed to do. They still live in the flesh. They still live in sin. They never, they never received victory. They didn't deny self. They didn't die daily. They didn't, if someone did them wrong, they just blamed the other person for being wrong. They, they, they never learned to be, live a submissive life. Could it be those? Could it be that we have many in the church today who will hear that one day? I never knew you. Yeah, you raise your hand, but, but you never gave it all. You never learned to, to deny self. You never learned to, to own, own your, your sin. You always blame someone else. And he will say, I never knew you. You never, you never gave. You, you, you were trying to get to heaven with, 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 with just giving one finger, but you never gave yourself. Could that be the case? Is that what he's trying to tell us? Or who are those people? So my revelation was, we put the emphasis on, for, on the one forgiving and not on the one making things right. Therefore, many things are never settled. They never feel good. Some of you will go back years and there's something there that happened but never felt good. How about you go back and say, what is still left to pay? There's, there's, I feel there's a debt that hasn't been paid. I feel that you had to sacrifice something for me. And all of a sudden, you would feel peace. And you would feel, I can breathe. And your anxiety is less. We try to give as little as we need and get as much as we can. How would we die to self and give what we need to give to make it right? Make restitution. Let's pray. Lord, we've read the scripture this morning. God, we see from the Old Testament, right from Genesis through Revelation, that you are extremely concerned that people will treat each other right in your eyes. 
not in their eyes. And Lord, so many things have been broken. Many churches have split because we didn't want to give an extra inch. And Lord, this morning we are we're asking ourselves, is there unpaid debt in my life? Debt that I never paid. I didn't want to pay. I didn't want to admit it. I didn't want to humble myself. And therefore, your blessing is not fully upon me. Therefore, your favor is not totally upon me. Maybe it's not money. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's an ill feeling that I have, and I just don't know why. Lord, we want to be your disciples. We want to learn from you. You paid it all, even though you didn't even have any sin yourself. And then you say, learn of me. Lord, teach us how to be true disciples of you. Learning to make things whole. As much as lies within us. God, you're so quick to forgive when we come to you and we repent. He says, if we come to you, you will in no wise cast us out. If we confess our sins, you're always faithful and just to forgive us for sins. God, we've done wrong so many times. And we don't know why things are not feeling more peaceful than they are. Give us a humble heart this morning to see what you see and to be honest with ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, where we've failed and help us to make things right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If there are those this morning that feel there's things, there are things in their life that are messy, that are not never settled, that were never truly dealt with properly, if you make a commitment right now to go make it right when you get a chance, God is already on your side. Even though you don't know exactly how you will do that, when you meet that person, I told you this story before, but when we moved to Canada, I was 14 years old, and I had gotten feed from the feed mill with my tractor, and I had backed up against the feed mill like everyone does, but I had backed, on, backed against the feed mill uh, harsher than I should have, and the, the person loading the feed said, next time uh, back up a bit slower, and I, was, I had a big mouth at the time. Not anymore. And, and so when then we moved to Canada. And for years that bothered me. And so when I went back, but five years later, I went to this man. I said, do you remember that? He said, no, I don't remember that. I said, I want to say I'm sorry what happened there. My conscience has never been cleared since that day. It was a small thing. But after that day, the ne devil never once ever accused me of that again. Never. If we don't do what we need to do, we give the devil a finger and he will take a hand. He will torment you. There's actually a whole lesson in that by itself how in the spiritual realm, if we don't forgive and we're handed over to tormentors, that's like God pulling his hand back. So ask yourself, are there things in your life that, that need to be that need to be finished? Maybe you need to go back and just ask one more time. Is there something left that wasn't paid? Do you feel that you had to pay for my debt? <laughs>